السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من أرسل الله رحمة وهداية ونور للعالمين. All praises due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى Lord of the world with mercy and the guidance we seek. And may Allah's peace and blessings be on the last and the seal and the master of all mankind, Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, upon his family, companions, and upon whoever follow his footsteps to the day of judgment. Brothers and sisters, welcome back to today's lesson on Hadith. Inshallah, today we have lesson four on fasting. Uh, during the last three lessons, we have highlighted the testimony of faith and uh, prayer and zakat. Through the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, reported on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with them both that Islam has been built upon five pillars. And we said that the meaning of Islam is submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are a Muslim, you must show total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You must accept what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala orders you to do and must keep away from what He subhanahu wa ta'ala orders you to keep away from. Of course, through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because he is our Prophet and Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then concerning the testimony of faith, we said that a Muslim, in order for anyone to embrace Islam to be a Muslim, he must testify that uh, there is no God deserving to be worshipped but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. And at the same time, he must also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger, the last of all the prophets and messengers of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if anybody bears witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he is the only God deserving to be worshipped, and disbelieves in Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He is not a Muslim. He is not a Muslim. So that's number one, or the first pillar of Islam. Concerning the second pillar, which is prayer, we said that prayer or salah is the main difference between Muslims and non-Muslims, according to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Concerning zakah, which is the third pillar of Islam, we said that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa taala. Of course, this is some some brief explanation. Allah subhanahu just to remind you of what we said last lessons. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran in 73 verses combined between the order to offer prayer and to give out zakah. وَأَقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتُوا الزَّكَاةَ And we said that He subhanahu wa ta'ala orders us to give out zakah by kind of purifying our money, by kind of purifying our souls. As He subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the chapter of Tawbah, خُذْ مِنْ أَمْوَالِهِمْ صَدَقَةً تُطَهِّرُهُمْ وَتُزَكِّيهِمْ بِهَا Today, inshallah, we have to do with fasting, which is siyam, which is siyam. So, brothers and sisters, Muslims are ordered, are obliged by Allah the Almighty to fast the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan. So, this is the obligation. This is the obligation, fasting the month of Ramadan. The month of Ramadan. But here's a question. What is the meaning of the word fasting or siyam? What is fasting? Yes. To control your habits. like yeah. uh, To control your habits. Habits like a nafs. But the nafs says, what is called nafs? English. Mm. Soul. To control your soul. Oh yeah. Soul. Giving up. Giving up. Giving up. Yeah. That's it. That's the meaning. So this is the actual meaning of the word fasting. Fasting in general meaning preventing oneself from all sins. Or you can say keeping away from doing any evil act or bad act. From doing or making any evil act or bad act. Okay, or from any act in general, any act in general. If you still remember the story of Mary the Virgin, when she took Jesus Christ after giving birth to him and went to her people, she asked her, "Qalu ya Maryamu, laqad jibti shay'an fariya." But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had previously instructed her, if she was asked with that question, to say, "Inni nadartu lil Rahman sawma." So, Salma, what is the meaning of the word Salma in that context? Means giving up speech. 
I'm going to speak. I'm going to talk to you anyway. I'm going to talk to you anyway. So, fasting in general meaning keeping away from all actions. From all actions. If you are giving up bad speech, so you are sa'imun from making bad speech. If you are keeping away from eating from unlawful sources, so you are sa'imun from eating from unlawful sources. So in general, brothers and sisters, fasting means keeping away from all actions. From all actions. Okay. But concerning the month of Ramadan or the recommended siyam, it means to abstain to prevent yourself abstain from eating drinking and sexual intercourse as well as all other nullifiers of fasting all other nullifiers of fasting from the dawn to sunset to sunset we are going to break down that definition okay so to abstain yourself from eating okay because if you eat during the day of Ramadan so you are not a fast you are not fasting and if you drink anything you are not fasting okay and you have sexual intercourse, you are not fasting. And if you commit, if you do any other of the nullifiers, nullifiers of, of, of fasting, you are no longer fasting during the month of Ramadan. Okay. And this fasting takes place within a particular period of time. From dawn, from dawn to sunset. From dawn to sunset. Okay. But... When do you think, when was fasting or siyam made obligatory upon us, upon Muslims? When it was made obligatory upon us? After the Hijrah. Yes, exactly when? Yes, so let's know. The second year after Hijrah. Second year. Yeah. Second year after Hijrah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay. So the question also right now, so we know that fasting, to abstain from eating, drinking, sexual intercourse, and anything that might magnify your fasting from dawn, from dawn to uh, sunset. And inshallah, Rabbi we are going to later on, inshallah, to, to have uh, in detail discussion on fasting, inshallah, when we are in, in, in the month of Ramadan. So fasting or siyam has been legislated, imposed upon Muslims in the second year after the hijrah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay, the question right now is: Was fasting, was fasting, obligation and obligation, or uh, uh, you can say, or among, among previous nations, among those nations for us? Yes. Yes, in the Quran. Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu kutiba alaykum siyam. Or you believe? Fasting during the month of Ramadan was made obligatory upon you as it was made obligatory upon those nations for you. But the question right now, what is the ultimate objective of fasting? In other words, why does Allah Almighty ask and oblige us to fast during Ramadan? We fast. We fast for about, for example, some of us for about 40 years are practicing fasting. For 30 years are practicing fasting. We saw obligatory Ramadan. We saw recommended days. So what? why do you fast to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the aim of fasting? Yeah, that's right. But we call it what? In Islam. Also to feel the poor people who don't have food. Worship. That's this is just one aspect of it. Worship. Just one aspect. Not the entire. Worship is yeah. just like purify yourself. Mm. Brothers and sisters, the answer is in the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ayyuhal ladheena aman, O you who believe. Taqwa. Taqwa. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> Fasting during the month of Ramadan was made obligatory upon you as it was made obligatory upon those before you so that you may attain, attain taqwa or piety. Piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So this is the ultimate objective of fasting. Piety, taqwa, or feeling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because if one attains the quality of taqwa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will directly admit him into the paradise, into Jannah, into heaven. Why? Because he subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a very explicit verse in Surah Al Imran, وَسَادِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضُ أُعِدَّتْ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That's to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared the paradise who dwells like that of the heavens and the earth for al-muttaqeen, the pious people, the righteous people, those who fear him. So, fasting gives you that opportunity to attain to piety, to reach the stage of piety, through fasting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through fasting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay, but right now I'd like, if you can tell us a hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa on the virtue of fasting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or in the reward prepared by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for those who fast. The great reward. You know that fasting has a great reward for Allah, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the believers, to those who fast. So who could tell us just one hadith? Mm. All the sins are done and the sins are done. So what, what kind of hadith is that? Hadith from the Prophet <laughs> And hadith from the Prophet yeah. sallam, who say that uh, all the, the sins of the children of Adam are, are, are all the sin no not like that but, all but, the deeds yeah all the deeds mm -hmm. of the children of Adam are for him yeah with the exception okay. of fasting it is to me mm -hmm. it is to me yes. that's to say that what is the meaning of that hadith what is the meaning of that wonderful hadith it means that none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the exact or the actual reward of fasting was why? Because fasting relies on sincerity. There's some sort of sincerity between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the slave. Okay? Uh, you are coming to the mosque to offer, you, to, to offer your prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but you, I'm, I'm, mashallah, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing some of our brothers, mashallah, offering their prayer perfectly. But I do not know their sincerity, the sincerity between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They might offer in prayer to, with, with, with the aim of showing off, which is riyah. Okay, but for fasting, none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows whether you are an actual fasting during Ramadan or you have nullified your fasting. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who actually knows that. Okay, so I'm going to tell you other hadith from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it's a very impressive one. A companion called Abu Umamata al-Bahili. Abu Umamata al-Bahili. Once asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, Tell me about a certain act of worship that might make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala admit me into the paradise. The Prophet وسلم, said to him, O oh, Abu Umama, adhere to fasting because fasting has no equivalent in Islam. Meaning that there is nothing, there is no act of worship that is equal to fasting. That is equal to fasting. So fasting of is of cardinal importance in Islam. To narrow down the idea, fasting means keeping away from any actions. Keeping away from speech is fasting. Keeping away from haram is fasting. Keeping away from doing evil and bad deeds is fasting. And keeping away from eating, drinking, and sexual intercourse and any other nullifier of fasting from dawn to sunset is fasting during the month of Ramadan. Fasting or suyam was imposed upon the Ummah of the Prophet وسلم, in the second year after Hijrah of his وسلم, with the ultimate objective of fasting is to attain taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when one fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will admit him into the paradise directly and the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, which he وسلم, states clearly that there is no act of worship which is uh, as equal as which is equivalent to fasting during the month of Ramadan. So, do you have any questions? And inshallah, later on, we are intending and planning to and to, to speak about 
the etiquettes, the rulings of fasting during the month of Ramadan, inshallah. What are the magnifiers of fasting? What if one eats uh, uh, while forgetting that he is fasting Ramadan? What if one has sexual intercourse with his wife during the month of Ramadan, during the day of Ramadan? Huh? What if, what? Is it permissible or not for one to kiss his, his wife during the day of Ramadan, to hug her during the day of Ramadan? Inshallah, to the end of uh, this series of rulings on fasting during the month of Ramadan. So, do any questions? Makro, inshallah, I'm, 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 as I said right now, I'm going to highlight all of these oh, rulings in, in detail. But for you to know right uh, up to now, uh, making madmada and istinshaq, uh, so uh, with, with a great amount of money, you are not required to make madmada and istinshaq during the, the, the months of Ramadan as you do it right now. Not to take a very plenty, not to take a very plenty uh, uh, water and put it in your mouth like that. Mm -hmm. It's 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 makro. It's makro. And the same way when you make an instant shot, hmm, you cannot do it right like that because it is makro. Also, it is makro. It is detestable for you to get close to your wife during the day of the month of Ramadan as long as you cannot control yourself. If you feel that you are not you cannot control yourself and that you you, you might ejaculate sperm, huh? so you should keep away from him. This, these are some of the these of acts of, of uh, uh, Siyam. There is brother Abdelaziz yeah. who asks, can you take intention of fasting five minutes before Maghrib? Uh, five minutes before Maghrib? Mm -hmm. This depends. Scholars differ on that point. Scholars differ on that point. Concerning Ramadan, scholars differ. Is just one intention, one niya, suffice the entire month of Ramadan or not? Some scholars say, yeah, one intention, one intention before the first night of Ramadan is enough. While others say, no, one must make intention for every day of fasting. One must make intention huh, with every day of fasting. So, when it is the first day of Ramadan, I'm going to make intention before Fajr. When it is the second day, I'm going to make intention. Okay? So, concerning that, concerning obligatory fasting, we have two opinions of scholars. Concerning the recommended fasting, huh, scholars say the act of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as indicated by the authentic hadith, makes it permissible for the Muslim. If you want to make intention during the day, it is up to him. There is nothing in it. Why? Because he sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as in the hadith, he used to come out, for example, and say, "Do you have food?" If he was told, "No, we don't have," he used to say, "Allahumma inni nawaitu suyama." I intended to fast. I intended to fast. So, obligatory, huh? scholars differ into two opinions. But if recommended, do it at any time you want. Sometimes I am a diabetic, and sometimes uh, when I start fasting, I mm -hmm. just say, oh Allah, I will try to fast all day. But if the sugar goes low, but, I mean, I'm a diabetic, I may have to grow, but it never happened. Mm -hmm. And I do like that, and I need a like that. Yeah. So, is that. Uh, so that's what I mean by one niya, one niya is enough for the entire month. Now, if in case my sugar goes down, can I break that? Then yeah, yeah, you must, you must. Yeah, in case, this is a very important point, in case your health is gonna to be uh, 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 hurt by fasting and the doctors recommended you or advised you to break your fast, you must do that. Doctor. Otherwise, you will be sent for. Doctor recommended me last two years you should not fast because once the Ramadan is over my sugar is not. So as doctor as long as doctors recommend you to do so you shouldn't fast. Because because no 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 because if if something bad happens to you huh, you will be blamed for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because the, we have what's called the ultimate objective the ultimate objectives of the Sharia of Islam number one keeping the soul keeping the soul. If your fasting is going to make you unhealthy, is going to, to kill you, for example, no. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا جَعْلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't make, doesn't impose hardship on you. Also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make ease to you. Not want, not want to make if, if, if things difficult for you. The problem is that that doctor is not Muslim. 
He just sees that you eat in the morning and then all day you don't eat. So, sugar will go so you are required to consult a Muslim doctor. Yes. A, clear, a, a, a clever Muslim doctor. And if he advise you to break your fast, you should do that. Yes. So, Brother Abdelaziz asks a second question. How about outside of Ramadan? What? How about outside of Ramadan? How uh, what? The question he asks, can you uh, take intention of fasting five minutes before Maghrib? Because you, when you were answering, I, I think this is, is, it, is that the same when you are out of Ramadan? This, this question, this question, I think it cannot be happen. Just to stay during the day and before Maghrib, you are going to make intention just five minutes before Maghrib. Mm -hmm. How could it be like that? How could it be like that? We can say at 10 a.m., at 11 a.m., he gets up and, and finds and find no food, for example, and says, I'm going to, 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 to make fasting, that's, that's okay. But to stay during the day and just five minutes before Maghrib, you're going to say, I'm, I'm fasting? What is that? Unless you're sleeping and <laughs> Yeah, so that's it. So, the brother Muhammad, he say, can you hug your can you hug your wife or kiss her on the forehead during fasting in Ramadan? In case you are fully able to control yourself and not ejaculating, if you are gonna if you think that you might ejaculate sperm, okay, then you are not allowed to do that because if you, ejaculation nullifies fasting. It's like a goodbye kiss. Yeah. Shukran, salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.